When I shifted from working in a larger company that I owned to running my own practice, my consulting practice, and working with a team virtually, uh, I had to really make a shift in terms of how I spent my time. You know, what, uh, what do you do in, in a given day, and what's a great use of your time? Can you build excellence? Can you build an excellent company? Primarily working with, um, uh, by yourself and with a small virtual team. You know, I was used to working with a team that was within uh, one location or multiple locations. There's a group of us in my company in Manhattan. And what I was now doing was consulting and focusing on uh, individual clients with me primarily doing most of the work. Um, I remember going to a, um, a business group luncheon and they would have these luncheons, they would have a guest speaker, and then they would talk about, uh, I guess, group business. And uh, the speaker was, um, was interesting, but it wasn't really something that really worked for me, what he was talking about. And uh, then they got onto the group business, and the president of the group was announcing that he was going to implement a new strategy for their meeting, and that was to include three sides with the um, monthly luncheon as opposed to two sides. And that would be something that would bring more value to the folks that they could, you know, rather than just having, um, I don't know, mashed potatoes and green beans, they could also have a third choice. And I'm sitting there in this meeting and I'm thinking, you know, is this, is this, is this what things have come to that, you know, I'm sitting in this meeting and we're talking about, mashed potatoes versus um, uh, corn. And, I, you know, when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, the question is, you know, do I go to this meeting? Is it really worth it? And I thought, okay, this, this clearly is not worth it. This is a waste of my time. And so you go to a lot of these meetings and you, figure, you try to figure out, oh, well, what's the value of a meeting? Why should I go or should I go at all? Well, initially you go into every, every door that's open because you want to figure out the lay of the land. You meet people, someone knows someone, uh, there's something happening in the community, you learn about it, um, you get a, a, a way into someone. You know, in this particular case, there was a guy who was retired there and uh, he was deciding to, um, to put some money into the uh, football field. Uh, they were looking to redo the football field. And the conversation he and I got into was interesting because he was telling me about some of his Wall Street buddies and what they were doing. And he gave me some tangible information that was really valuable to me. And I, I came away from that meeting thinking, aside from the discussion of, of the, the shift in the luncheon and the, and the vegetable choices, that was a pretty good meeting in that I learned something about a company that I would not have known had I not gone. And this is one of the challenges when it comes to spending your time and how do you spend your time. My vote is that you stay out and you, you stay engaged. And what you will find over time is that you'll be able to aim at better meetings, better groups. You'll be able to figure out what really works for you. And you'll begin to understand that this is a group I should meet with for this reason. And this group is comprised of, of these individuals, and that's valuable. Uh, but the interim means you have to spread yourself out. You have to go to uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the chamber meetings. You have to go to the, uh, the, lo yeah, the local speaker. You have to go to the local association, just so you can figure out what's going on, just so you can understand how things work. This is an old-fashioned approach to building a business, and what's happened today is because we're so virtual, we're so uh, driven by technology, many folks have gotten away from that. But I find that there are certain things you just don't find out unless you're physically present on location. You know, if you walk down a street, you will see opportunities that you wouldn't see otherwise. If you go to a meeting, you will hear things that you wouldn't otherwise know. Um, you will run into people that you wouldn't meet normally because you're out and about. And you'll, most important, you'll have an opportunity to try out your pitch, to see how people respond, to hear what's on 
uh, the mind of the business community and to, to, to build some relationships, to meet some people that can evolve into something more meaningful and more significant. There was one guy I met when I first started consulting. He and I had breakfast. And I was telling him all about my grand plans and, and how I was going to focus on these high-end businesses and so forth. And at the time, what I was thinking a lot about was extending my activities in customer service because in the 80s, I, I had a practice where I gave seminars and um, we used to have a, a, uh, an event called Give the Customer Quality Service. And this used to attract a lot of mid-sized companies and large-sized companies on the weekend um, who would use it to give people an intensive on service. Well, what I found is once I moved into a, a focus of more entrepreneurial companies, they had different needs and different interests. Surely they were interested in service. But uh, it was really this gentleman at breakfast who said to me, he said, you know, that sounds really good, but what most companies want are sales. And... Uh, it was obvious that sales was something I needed to put more attention on, but he just put a nice punctuation mark on it by saying, Andre, all that stuff you're talking about is clever and interesting, but help people get more sales and you'll get more sales. And so that's what I did. I started to focus on that and that uh, enabled my practice, my consulting practice, my speaking activities to really blossom had lots of sales um, experience and knowledge, but I wasn't sharing that in this new practice. So once you get out, you'll meet people who will cut through things just like that. They'll hear you say something. In fact, I just the other day I had a conversation with someone and I was listening to her tell me about what she was doing and I could hear as she was talking it through that mm, that's not the focus I would have. And, um, and I said that to her, and she left that meeting thinking about what she was doing in a completely different way. So if the question is, should you go or should you not go, I would say go. I would say check out the, um, the lay of the land, what people are talking about, who you can meet. Practice your pitch in situations that are low stakes get comfortable talking about your company and your service, figure out what the uh, points of pain are out there, the pain points, things, problems you can solve, and then z zero in on where you can be excellent, and then focus on meetings and activities where excellence can happen. And it's a phasing process. Initially, you'll, you'll uh, go places and you'll think, well, this wasn't as beneficial as it could be. But in time, it will become better and better because you'll become better and better. So the question is, should you go to the meeting? Yes, but figure out the right meetings to go to, work on your strategy, work on your skills, and everything about your business will get better because you're out and about and engaged. If you like this tip, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you liked it. Share it with someone in your network. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more coming, a lot more here and I look forward to chatting with you next time.